Welcome to Encanto, which starts off with Nana telling Little Marble about this magic gift she's about to get from a magic candle. And she's like, is this shit magic? Damn right. And she tells her about this whole story, how she ran away from home when she had three babies because uh, I'm guessing one of our Americans evicted them or took their land or whatever and killed their husband. So they're obviously Latino or Hispanic. Is that the same thing? They're Hisplatino. Annex. Listen, I'm ignorant and stupid. Just go with it, okay? So Hobby dies, she cries, and Ken's like, don't cry, watch me go Super Saiyan, and gives them a bunch of mountains and a magic house that's alive, a bunch of land, and probably kills the four attacker slots too. And when her children came of age, this miracle candle also gave them all a gift. So like, when they hit puberty? Or is there a set age? Oh wait, maybe a blank door just pops up and that's when they know it's time. Anyway, they touch the knobs, the door knobs that is, and get a gift, aka a power, and so do their children, and so on and so forth, you know, for the generation to also get gifts and shit. And they made a community that they help with their power, and stuff and this is the day that Marble gets her gift, capiche? Then we cut to grown-up Marble helping set up the house with the house while singing about her family's gifts to some children. But fuck that shit, because I wanna spread the cheeks of movie expression my own way. See, candle give gift, anybody who get gift, get door. And that door leads to a room that is magically bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Kinda like your mom's pussy. And the first person with the door is obviously grandma. Don't know exactly what her power is, but I am guessing that she is the keeper of the candle because the candle's in her room and the person the house listens to the most, or something like that. Keeper of the flame, whatever. Next her daughter and Marble's mom, who can heal people with food. Super useful power. Next, skinny depression. Nana's other daughter, she can control the weather, it looks like more with her emotions than, you know, her brain, which is kind of a shit deal because she's a stupid emotional female. Next, Nana's third kid, Bruno, who has Voldemort's status among this family because they don't talk about him because he sees the future and they think he bad luck, bad juju. And one day after one of his visions, he left. Also, extra information about him to have visions or use his power. He needs a big empty space with lots of dry sand. Kind of like your mom's pussy. Next, the grandkids. Rainy bitch got three kids. First one being acoustic and by that I mean she can hear everything everywhere. It's gotta be like a set limit to that, right? Like a radius. Also, Imo. It's kind of a shit tier burden of a gift. Next kid of hers is a troll idiot with a troll power, which is shape-shifting. Next of her kids is little Antonio, who's gonna get his powers today, but let me spoil it for you, he can talk to animals. Next, Healy, but she got three kids too. Everybody got three kids, I don't know why. One of them is super duper strong, and the other one can make, wait for it, flowers. Another baloney tier power. But even worse than that, we got Marble, who didn't get shit. A fact that these kids are very supportive of. I am just as special as the rest of my family. Alright guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. I like that kid. She's going places. Now back to the movie. Song goes on, Madrigals, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure she's strong, but that bridge should collapse under its own weight if it's held like that. But whatever, maybe it's held together with magic bullshit too. They're all prepping for Antonia's gift receiving celebration with everyone harking on about how she didn't get a gift. Way to drive that point home movie. And Anna's low key, high key being an asshole, like stay out the way, you useless, giftless gringo. They can't find Antonio, so she goes into her normal plebeian room where she knows he is to give him a present to chill his nerves a bit because he's afraid that he won't get a gift like her. And she's like, don't worry, Holmes, you'll do fine. And as he has to go up the stairs to touch a candle and then the blank magical door to reveal his prowler, the pressure mounts and he asks her to hold his hand while he goes out there which is odd because you're supposed to do it alone and shit and as they walk together she gets memories of her gift receiving ceremony or whatever failing to launch with her door disappearing and the flame fluttering he touches all the crap he needs to touch and immediately starts talking to a toucan that lands on his shoulder they open the room and he has a mini jungle in it they part hey and then like let's all take a picture what year is this and why the fuck is the camera so goddamn old doesn't matter because they leave out marble whether that's on purpose or by mistake is unimportant because she starts singing a sad song about how she's so sad she has no powers and she's useless I don't know why this bitch complaining though because she can clearly slow down time. Anyway, at the end of the song, their house gets cancer. She notices it vibrating and cracks all the way up to the candle window with the flame and the doors flickering. So she bursts into the party like, the house is in danger. It's got scoliosis. Cracks all over the fucking walls, dog. They go out to see and find nothing and nobody believes her. And Nana's like, quit your bullshit and let's get zoinked, bitches. They go back to the pate and that night she can't sleep because she's too busy overthinking about the flame and shit. So she climbs up to the roof and makes her way over to the candle. And I have no idea why she's doing this. Like, what's the big idea here, kid? You're gonna pour some gas lean on that bitch what's the plan whatever nana shows up like Fuck, i miss you pedro i need you cracks in our casita this shit blows what if our whole miracle is dying oh we can't lose our home Blah. so marble takes it upon herself to save the miracle and she suits up ready to go rescue it from the jaws of death when she realizes she has no idea what the hell she's doing and she goes wait a minute fuck my door and she decides to go to the hero at all who's gotta know something about this losing the power stuff or losing the miracle stuff and next morning she tells her that the only person worried about this magic stuff is her and the rats in the wall and her hung sister because she heard her eye twitching throughout the night if you heard that then you heard nana talking to pedro last night why are you leaving that out ho does she have selective hearing because if not well, as i said this power sucks because that means she can hear everything from the wail of all the women that are giving birth in this town to every teenage boy in this encanto aggressively masturbating to that extra piece of curvy ass they call their neighbor's daughter hell i bet she probably heard someone busting the fat one 
on to her. This power sucks, yo. How is she not going insane? Whatever. At the dinner table, she keeps trying to ask her hunk sister about it. While Grandma tells Flower Girl that the dumbass that's about to propose to her wants to squeeze five babies out of her. And Louisa gets away. Marble follows her and annoys her into singing a song about how everyone expects her to be strong and she and she kind of feels soft. And she feels that if she's not strong, she's a useless member of this community or just a useless piece of shit in general. All the while she's singing this, she's still grabbing shit from physically unideal or impossible areas to grab shit from. After it's done, though, Marble comforts her and Louisa tells her that she overheard the grown-ups talking about Bruno having a vision about this shit when they were kids and she should go look in his room or his tower for this last vision he had and she'll know the vision when she sees it. I don't know how the hearing girl didn't overhear this. Maybe that was before they got their powers though. I don't know. So she goes to Bruno's room where the casita cannot enter uh, for some reason because uh, it's uh, deactivated. Uh, I, I don't know why but it is. And it's big as hell full of sand and she goes up to the tower on a bunch of stairs, jumps a scap with a makeshift Indiana Jones rope and then goes into the spooky empty vault and finds glowing green shards of glass in the sand and while the door shuts on her and the place starts falling apart she speedruns collecting all this green glass and tries to get out before dying. Kind of like how I'm speedrunning saying this bit because I have a lot of shit to say about this crap. Number one, why is the room deactivated when he technically did not leave? Number two, this door is clearly gonna close on its own. Why don't you prop it up with a rock or something, you fucking stupid retard taco? It can't be open from the inside, but that's besides the point. She didn't know that till the last second. Number three, she gets out of the room, right? But how the hell did she do that? That rope is clearly gonna settle right there, if not further back. You're telling me she jumped all that shit? Suck my fat cock movie. Number four, she didn't hurt herself at all digging for these sharp shards of glass super fast, although she cut herself in a broken piece of clay pot. This is retarded. Whatever, she gets out and while they prep for Flower Girl's boyfriend to come over and propose to her, she asks whether whole about Bruno and basically the whole family goes into song about how they're not supposed to talk about Bruno while talking about Bruno and how much of an evil asshole he is being sort of a jinx and shit. So she does the green glass puzzle and sees herself in front of her house, broken house, and her dad sees this and she tells him everything and he's like, everything's fine, no one has to know. Except mega ears and she snitches at the food table, uh, the, yeah, whatever, the food table and basically everybody finds out, what a bitch man, I don't know why she does this, but long story short, Buff Girl starts to lose her powers a bit and the house starts to crack and some raccoons steal the green puzzle and put it together for them to see while all their powers go a little bit haywire and the proposal gets fedunkled. They all blame her, then some rats take the vision and go into the wall, so she falls on into the wall. And in there she finds critically acclaimed music artist Bruno Mars, who runs away from her inside the walls of the house. She almost falls into this pit, let me guess she's about to save her. Yep, there it goes, he saves her, but not really because it's not that deep, unlike your mom's. But they get up and she finds out he'd been living in the walls ever since that last vision, because he knew everyone would blame him, although he's just a messenger. He only sees this possible future. They're the ones that make it, not him. They're the bitches. It ain't Bruno's fault, he good guy. And he loves his family and wants to help it, but he doesn't know how, because you know, everything he does sucks. And he says this last vision he had was a bit changey and he left to protect her and kind of him and he's like sorry I wish I could see more and she's like well then see more asshole and he's like even if I wanted to I can't because you wrecked my vision cave and I need a big open space to have visions how does he know about that she didn't mention anything also it's not like you lack any big open areas in your room without your vision cave dickhead anyway the rest told Antonio everything and he offers up his room for the visioning they use it and they see what looks like the same shit but more there's a butterfly and the candle gets brighter when Marble hugs her flower sister which pisses her off because they got queef between them because she thinks that she's Miss Perfect and always has everything going her way and Miss Perfect thinks that she is always in the way and is a moron, I guess. Yeah. So Bruno leaves and she goes into her sister's room and they fight echoing the shit I just said a second ago. By the way, this is the last room we see and I am fucking pissed, mate. I want to see the rest. Does Buff Girl have a gym in her room? Does Morph Boy have a bunch of pictures of random people on the wall that he can morph into? Is Marble's mom's room just Master Chef? Does she have Gordon Ramsay in her room? I need to know. Also, this host power's only actual use is making her room smell good and help bees make honey. Also, apparently she can make ropes. Fucking fantastic, bro. But if someone's dying, all she can do is provide flowers for that sucker's funeral. That's it. Useless power. That changes though, because she goes into song about how she has all this pressure to be perfecto in this encanto and like get a lot of babies from this dude she doesn't even like because her powers are so damn useless she's still of more use being a goddamn baby oven that's basically what she's saying here okay but now through fighting and pressure and song and whatever she makes a different type of plant and she's happy she made something new and different expressing her imperfectness and whatnot all i really see is she can grow crops now good for you kid anyway more song and dance they hug shit out and the flame gets better shit gets fixed too nana sees them and she gets mad as hell like what are you doing mirabelle what are you doing with my perfect baby maker i'm fixing the miracle no you ain't fixing shit four eyes you're breaking it you're the one ruining the gift with all this pressure on us to be perfect. Nothing's ever good enough for you, saggy tits, wrinkly pussy. Saggy tits, wrinkly pussy. At least I got some dick, unlike you, you eternal eunuch. You should be in a box slowing down the river, grandma. And while they fight, cracks form all over the Encanto through their house too. And the candle starts being endangered because the casita is falling apart. A couple of them try to save it, but in doing so, not in doing so, I mean, they lose their powers while doing it. And the only one who actually succeeds to get to the candle and grab it is Marble. While they all get shepherded out of the house by the house, Bruno f juggernauts his way out the walls like a legend. And the house protects Marble from itself falling apart. The candle oddly melts out super quickly and the casita is dead and these boards should not fall to the outside like that if they're propped up like that. But whatever. They're all alive and Marble's pretty sad so she runs away through the cracked mountain. They're all looking for her and we get this shot.
I don't know why padding to them for this one line seemed out of place, unnatural, and just a bit forced. Not gonna lie. Who cares though? Saggy Pocahontas finds crying marble at the river where she got the gift that fucking nuked the yellow-haired, blue-eyed, horse-riding that killed her hubby. We get a bunch of memories of her with her husband and her kids and stuff and when she got the gift and grew old and you see all the kids with the pressure of living up to her expectations while she walks past their rooms. And wait a minute, Bruno's room is not walk pastable. The fuck? Anyway, more memories of how the horse riding assholes force people out of their homes and she like, I've been given a miracle and I was so afraid to lose it that I lost sight of who it was actually for and now I'm the reason it's broken. Oh my god. And I was like, don't say that homie, you suffered so much alone and you were given a miracle because of you, blah de blah de blah, all that stuff. And then butterflies, oh this division location, oh my god, hugs all around, fly Flies all around. No, that's not flies. Butterflies all around. And they go back home to their screwed up house. Bruno re-enters the family sphere and they're glad he and Marble are back. They're all like, we'll be okay, but the shapeshifter dude's like, Not if we don't have a house. What? We don't have a house. I can't say we don't have a house. What is that? Not a house. <laughs> <laughs> they go into song for hopefully the last godforsaken time of this movie, rebuilding their home with the grateful, helpful townspeople. Also, I'm guessing Marble's gift is taking Nana's place when she finally does float down the river. They build their house again in like a day. Ear bitch gets with um, this guy, and with a final doorknob touch, the house comes back to life. They all get their powers back. They don't get a new candle though, so what are all the future generations gonna touch to get the powers? Doesn't matter. This movie gets an Empire State building out of a Burj Khalifa.